Hey what's up guys, Bitcoin in crypto market recovers quite a bit from this recent dip, it could be the end of the drawdown. In this video, we'll take a look at the number of cool on-chain analytics charts, then I will analyze validity of the stock to flow model and finally we will we'll explain why fireworks is around the corner. This video is brought to you by BlockFi. BlockFi offers a cryptocurrency exchange, interest bearing accounts and low interest rate loans worldwide. There is no commission fees, no monthly fees or minimum deposits. With BlockFi interest accounts, you can earn up to 8.25% compounding rate on your cryptocurrency holdings. Now you do not have to sell your crypto and pay high taxes. Borrow money while you hodling is the way to go. You can borrow money against your crypto holdings at rate as low as 4.5% APR. BlockFi uses ACH that allows users to deposit and withdraw funds with no fees. BlockFi is the first company to launch a Bitcoin reward credit card, a Visa credit card that earns 1.5% back in Bitcoin on every single purchase. No annual fees, no foreign transactions. Sign up today and earn up to $250 bonus when you open an account with the link blockfi.com slash aimstone in the description box below. Ok guys, today crypto looks slightly better. The entire market cap is at $2.6 trillion. Bitcoin's diamonds is at 42%, while Ethereum diamonds remains at 20%. Bitcoin bounces back about $57,000 from its recent low of $53,000, so we have a nice increase in the past 24 hours by 6%. On the week, BTC is still down by 2.8%. Market cap is once again approaching $1.1 trillion. Ethereum is very close to be about $4,400, but 5k it sounds even better. It will happen sooner than we think. ETH has even better pump, it's up by 7% of the day and it's also up by 1% the week. Ethereum and Binance are the only two crypto assets in the top 10 listing that are up on the day and on the week. Solana currently is on the 5th spot, it's trading just about $200, an all time high was slightly lower than $260, it pulled back by quite a bit. On the day it's up by 10% and on the week it's down by 10%, it has a mixed performance. Cardano is behind Solana, is the second biggest loser on the week, it's down by 14%. Shitcoin Dogecoin has a decent pump, it's up by 10% of the day, actually it is the second best performing asset behind Solana. Ok, enough of shitcoins, let's move on. Michael Saylor and his company just cannot stop buying Bitcoin. MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 7000 to Bitcoin for $414 million in cash at an average price of $59,187 per Bitcoin. As of 11 21 we hodled 121,044 Bitcoins acquired for $3.57 billion at an average price of $29,534 per Bitcoin. Why did he get additional $414 million in cash? Did he issue another bond? I will have to dig into that more deeper. 121k BTC, that's like 0.6% of all BTC in circulation. He paid 3.57 billion dollars for that amount. Now that 121k BTC will cost you around 7 billion dollars. So he generated a nice 3.43 billion dollars for his company within a year or so. Not bad at all, I'm sure he will be buying more BTC in the future. Hopefully he will be careful with the leverage, because Bitcoin is volatile. Here is an interesting chart that represents a number of wallets with at least 10,000 Bitcoin. Damn and 10,000 BTC, that's a lot of money. That would be more than 570 million dollars. Those guys are not just whales, they are moby freaking dicks. An all time high was back in 2018 where the number of these wallets surpassed 120. Since then it was in a steady decline, it dropped to this current number of around 90 wallets. That's actually not a bad thing. Those Bitcoin being absorbed by the market and being distributed globally to smaller guys. We want Bitcoin to be distributed as much as possible. However, we can see from this chart that these whales have been buying this dip. Michael Saylor is of course one of them. Here is another very interesting chart, it represents Bitcoin price drawdowns from an all time highs. First decent dip was in the beginning of 2021 where BTC dropped by almost 30%. The next month we had another one where BTC dropped by 24%, then followed by 26% back in April. The biggest one was of course during the summer where BTC dropped by 
Then, the second biggest one was in September, where BTC dropped by 37%. And just now we had 21% correction, which is the smallest compared to the other ones. So what does that tell us? It tells us that Bitcoin is very volatile, it goes up and down randomly. If you are not willing to huddle during those 30-40% dips, then maybe Bitcoin market is just not for you. If you are willing to wait and huddle through those dips and even bear markets, it's just a matter of time when you will build meaningful wealth. Ok, let's move on to plan B. Here is a very cool chart he just recently posted that represents risk adjusted returns across different assets. In simple language, risk adjusted returns measures how much risk do you have to take compared to suitable rate of returns. The higher the ratio, the better the outcome. Let's start with this dot that represents bonds, gold and even S&P 500. On average, you will be exposed to around 8% of risk, which is in this case represents volatility and you can expect around 9% rate of returns. If you would invest in Facebook for example, you can expect 35% risk and 30% annual rate of returns. If you would invest in Tesla, your risk adjusted return would be even better. 50% risk, 65% annual rate of returns. If you would invest in Amazon, you would take a lot of risk with only 35% annual rate of returns. Bitcoin in fact is less riskier than Amazon with approximately 75% volatility and a generated 170% annual rate of returns in the past decade. If you are scared of volatility, you could invest 10% in Bitcoin and huddle 90% in cash. And you will still outperform Facebook, Google and Apple and so on. But I would never recommend holding that much of cash, because we know what Federal Reserve is doing. Now, let's talk about stock to flow model. Is it broken? Is it valid? What is going on? Yes, Plan B indeed believed that Bitcoin will be at 97k by the end of the November. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like this is going to be the case. And last Bitcoin jumps by 40k in one day. But let's be honest here, it's not going to happen. In my opinion, if BTC price stays within this blue confident interval for the most of the time, then I would say stock to flow remains valid. But if Bitcoin price on the other hand drops way below this confident interval and stays there for a long period of time, then we can probably conclude the stock to flow model is broken. Now, let's take a look at this video where Willy will give his own opinion about stock to flow and he will explain what will happen next. Let's take a look. Go, going back to uh, Plan B's uh, S2F model, there was a thing. Did you see the thing that came out from Huobi Research? No. What did they say? They uh, suggested it's failed because he's not accounting for the impact of tapering and raised interest rates on market liquidity that institutions and people will have less money to invest in risky assets. So um, I don't think that is a valid argument um, mm -hmm. because if you really understand stock to flow. He's creating a valuation um, based on scarcity, right? It's mm -hmm. like, and he defines scarcity as the limit of stock to how much of that is coming in. Um, and then he can compare it to gold, silver, and whatnot. And Bitcoin has its own stock to flow. As each halving happens, it gets more and more scarce. And um, he can show that these networks or, you know, assets all follow a continuum that's very predictable based on how scarce they are. And so it's a supply side, it's a supply side equation that does gives you an what's nice is it gives you an absolute valuation, right? Gives you absolute like a lot of stuff doesn't. It just says we're going up or down. Like a lot of stuff I do is we're going up or down. Um, and when you start to introduce demand side to it, it it's not stock to flow. You can't say this is a broken model because it's a supply side valuation model. When they're saying, well, there's going to be tapering and whatnot and like you're, there's going to be less money to go into it, it's not the point of stock to flow. It's absolute scarcity and how, how historically we have valued things through human behavior. And, um, you know, if we print more money, then like that will affect, affect the stock to flow valuations of gold and silver and then Bitcoin. So that raises itself, I, I, I would say. Like I don't know if stock um, plan B is is doing that um but you know once you know you double the supply of um, us dollars then you've really got to recalibrate stock to flow valuation of gold because it's just gone up and everything else goes up but it doesn't invalidate the model i think um it's a pretty safe model in terms of what it claims to do and um it never gives you a price target that's exact because we've seen huge overshoots but pretty much 
falls back onto that line. So, yeah, I don't think um, I don't think that argument's valid. I mean, what the general message is: buy the fucking dip, right? Yeah, I agree with it. Um, I mean, I, I just see it as consolidation, right? Um, I mean, I, I said that in the newsletter. We're going to consolidate. Um, I said that last dip as well as consolidate. Did like consolidation means it comes down, it finds, it tests, and then it moves up without crashing. Um, and we're uh, it's we're really like as it's consolidating, demand's increasing, the hodlers are buying, the speculative guys are um, actually. Lee, they're holding holding strong for their swing trade, um, while the the hodlers are buying more. So there's not a lot of selling. Um, if anything, we're just waiting for the derivative guys that are just in it for the short um, futures contract to give up on their long position and then um, get out of that trade. And then once they're all out, then the price can move up. Um, and we're getting quite close. Like the derivative data I'm I'm looking at is we're, we're probably within a few days away from the next leg moving up. Um, just just need to see um, the trend continue, but we're very close to that consolidation bottom. Undoubtedly, um, a lot of demand, a lot of coins being scooped off exchanges. Um, it's also a weird time of the year, um, like tax season upon us, and people are starting to sell down to pay taxes. Um, also hedge funds, uh, end of year, they don't really want to do stuff. A lot of traders want to take plan for their, um, you know, Christmas holidays. So the fireworks looks like it's um, really geared to the start of next year. So I feel like we're going to be in this consolidation most of December. I'd be very surprised if we do the Plan B thirty four percent for thirty four thousand um, dollar green candle <laughs> in one month. Um, I feel like it's going to fizzle sideways, and then January we we start to pick up pace again. Um, so. Yeah, like I feel like we're um, again, you know, a couple of days out, maybe even sooner, um, but days out from finding our consolidation um, bottom and, and, and a good move up. Um, it might have started already, but um, yeah, but on chain's always been bullish. It's been like we're buying, we're buying, we're buying, um, and the guys that can dump their speculative swing trade are not dumping. Willie Wu also believes the stock to flow model still remains valid. But he said that stock to flow model is a supply side focus. I would kinda disagree with that. If you project certain price targets into the future, especially that are much higher than the current price, by default you are assuming the demand will be higher than it is today. Overall, Willy Wu believes we will consolidate the price for a while. And by the end of the year and possibly in the beginning of 2022, we will have fireworks. Let me know what you guys think. We will see fireworks anytime soon. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.